Now, I've got a bit of a beast on the uh, bench for us to take a look at today. It's uh, a bit of an unknown, this antenna. I picked it up off eBay. The seller's got a few of these. Uh, they came from uh, an office environment. Um, it is a bit of a beast. It's 300 millimeters by 300 millimeters square. It's a dual band panel antenna for 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi. But apart from that, the seller knows nothing about these. I don't know if he uh, just got them out of the skip or, you know, whatever. I don't know. But uh, there's no markings on this to say who the manufacturer is. I'm really hoping that when we open this up, there might be something on the inside that will give us a clue to the uh, manufacturer. Um and yeah it's uh, just a bit of an unknown so what i'll do i'll take this over to the test bench we'll have a look at the uh, frequency responses for the uh, 2.4 gigahertz and the uh, 5 gigahertz see how well it performs being a, a dual band panel antenna i don't think we've had a dual band panel antenna for uh, wi-fi on here before uh, i've had plenty of omnidirectional ones but uh, we'll take a look at it and then uh, we'll crack it open to see what kind of uh, magic's going on, on the inside now here it is on the bench and as i said it is a uh, bit of a beast i've got it in a uh, vice at the moment and i've got the wide angle lens on the camera just so we can get the uh, full view of the antenna it really is a beast well, let's take a look over on the network analyzer so here's the output on the network analyzer then as you can see i've got the cursor on five gigahertz here i'm just scanning from uh, 4.8 gigahertz up to uh, 6.3 gigahertz uh, rather than looking uh, at the entire spectrum the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz all at once it's better if we can zoom in but look at this lovely frequency response for the uh, 5 gigahertz wi-fi we've got the 5 gigahertz here as i say we'll go down all the way 5.1 all the way down to 5.3 gigahertz really nice and wide frequency response there for uh, 5 gigahertz wi-fi in fact this is probably one of the best 5 gigahertz wi-fi antennas i've looked at so far um, really is a beautiful response and it goes all the way along here look all the way to about 5.8 gigahertz there to uh, 6 gigahertz there beautiful response um, I don't think uh, you'd get away with using this for FPV at 5.8 gigahertz although yeah still dips quite nicely there but for 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi that's really nice so let's take a look at the 2.4 gigahertz and see if that's just as good so here we are at 2.4 gigahertz then for Wi-Fi and I'm scanning from 1600 megahertz over here all the way up to 3 gigahertz and we've got this dip here right uh, in the uh, Wi-Fi spectrum I'll move the cursor you can see 245 there 240 there so it's a little bit to one side of the Wi-Fi spectrum but it's still nice we've got this nice dip here and we've also got this nice little dip over at uh, one point uh, sorry 1800 megahertz to around uh, 2 gigahertz there so could possibly use this for uh, 3g um, cellular networks as well it really is wide the dip in the 2.4 gigahertz is not as nice and pronounced as uh, the uh, 5 gigahertz but as a dual band uh, panel antenna it's probably one of the best I've ever seen yeah nice response for the 2.4 and the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi now as we saw on the uh, test bench really nice responses there at 5 gigahertz wi-fi especially and really broadband as well uh, wasn't expecting it to be quite so broadband it was broadband on the 5 gigahertz and for the 2.4 gigahertz uh, almost into the uh, 1800 megahertz there for the uh, cellular networks but um, it's held in place by the looks of it by Phillips screws all the way around here there's also some kind of uh, silicone sealant to keep the uh, water out so let me uh, remove the screws and uh, hopefully we'll get a better idea of what's going on with this antenna when we take a look at the inside now here's the antenna with the lid off and as we can see it's uh, 
Well, I, I will say the design of this is pretty impressive. I wasn't expecting to see so many elements. And straight off the bat, if you want to talk about gain, um, at 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, this uh, panel antenna is probably working in the 20s, uh, maybe 21 dB of gain. Um, at 2.4 gigahertz lower, probably about 16 dB of gain, maybe 15 dB of gain, because as you saw on the network analyzer, we haven't got such a nice response as we have at the 5 gigahertz. But uh, that's the way uh, things are when you, you dual band antennas or multi band antennas, you have to take the gain as an average across the band. Now, if we look at the measurements of the elements, they are perfect squares and they measure 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters. And that's spot on for a dual band panel antenna. If uh, this was going to be uh, for five gigahertz only, uh, it would have to measure 30 millimeters wide by 22 millimeters high. And you know, a, a dual band setup like this, uh, when we've seen them on the omnidirectional antennas, they're just slightly uh, short, not quite sitting in the middle of both bands, but uh, just slightly shorter, and they're hitting those uh, secondary harmonics. Um, as I've said previously, you know, a quarter wavelength is a half wavelength in, uh, you know, somewhere else in the spectrum, or an eighth of a wavelength somewhere else in the spectrum. And that's what they're kind of doing here. The, the kind of getting those uh, two harmonics, but uh, this is definitely working better in the five gigahertz band, probably because this is uh, a lot closer to that frequency, and we're getting that secondary harmonic in the 2.4, which again, you know, for a dual band uh, panel antenna, we're getting good responses in both those areas, and it's uh, extremely wide as well, as you saw on the uh, network analyzer. So next I've taken off the wide angle lens because I want to zoom in on some of the bad points of this antenna. And point number one is just sloppiness. You can see where we've got that feed point in there for the main driven element. And you can see how long that is. It's not snipped off. And you know, straight away you've created an antenna there because you've got this piece of copper sticking up here. You've you've put an antenna into the mix on top of an antenna that's just sloppy that just wants cutting off and the second thing is the PCB material itself this PCB material is extremely extremely cheap it's uh, very very brittle uh, it kind of reminds me of uh, 80s vintage uh, through hole technology and uh, when I took the lid off this it did smell like an old book um, <sighs> I mean this this f well it's it's not fr four board it is a kind of a a fiberglass uh, board but it's almost like um fiberglass cardboard to be honest with you and it's extremely brittle and you can see how brittle it is here where they've had to uh, make holes through here so the uh, screws can come through and attach to the uh, uh, the uh, cover of the antenna they've had to uh, make a gap in there but uh, because it's so brittle they haven't been able to make a perfect hole and you can see where it's cracking on the sides and uh, this one here as well it's just extremely brittle material you'll see this kind of PCB material in really cheap uh, electronics you know for um, you know chargers for phones for instance the really cheap ones that you can buy for a couple of pounds on uh, certain uh, websites that uh, pop after only uh, an hour's uh, uh, worth of use being plugged in that when you take them apart they kind of got this cardboardy PCB material extremely cheap made down to a price and the next thing that I don't like about this is uh, you've got some double-sided foam uh, in two places under here but it's not enough to keep the uh, gap between the uh, back reflector here which is grounded by the way if I haven't uh, mentioned that um, and uh, the uh, basically the PCB of the main driven element. It's uh, an average of uh, six millimeters uh, away from the back reflector, but because you've only got that foam, hopefully you can see it down in there, stuck in the middle here, this is very wibbly wobbly, and it's not a constant distance uh, away from uh, this back reflector over the entire element board there. It's uh, lower in some places, and that's just really, really sloppy and I kind of think that 
you know uh, when I took this off it did kind of spring when I took the lid off this that possibly it was uh, nicking this down a little bit and uh, you know having it much closer which would certainly wouldn't help the antenna it would still work but uh, as I said it's all the little things that add up um, they could have easily got away with this by adding some uh, little spaces under here even foam spaces just to give this uh, a little bit more support around the sides it's not enough really and the other thing that uh, isn't uh, very good is uh, the board again itself the uh, copper that's on here is so thin it's uh, kind of got bald patches in some of the areas it, it doesn't show up too well on camera but uh, this is extremely thin copper on here and you can see where uh, we've got little ball patches in the elements here a little bit rough at the side and that's because uh, to etch all the copper off this board um, yeah, because it's so thin and you're leaving it in the tank uh, long enough to etch all the uh, copper you don't want off you can start attacking your artwork because uh, it's so thin and removing material where you don't want to be removed and you can see that's what's happened here it's not any kind of rot over time or anything like that 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 happened straight from the factory that was there when this uh, antenna was assembled and it's it's an extremely thin copper it's it's not a high quality copper it's uh, kind of got a dull tinge to it and i have seen these uh, type of pcbs before um you can buy them they're as cheap as chips and as i said they've kind of got a cardboard feel to them it's 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 not a thin copper i mean it's nowhere near as thick as uh, the tape that you see me use sometimes i mean this is much thicker than uh, this copper on here it really is wafer thin it's not i mean the antenna's been built down to a price for for sure and i think this is what lets this antenna down it's been uh, built down to a price uh, it is a vintage antenna i would uh, put a date on this possibly uh, around 2003 2004 maybe even a little bit earlier than that um contrary to popular belief uh, 5 gigahertz wi-fi has been around just as long as uh, 2.4 but it never made it into uh, people's homes until around 2010 when much faster broadband speeds uh, were available to uh, you know customers in their homes instead of businesses so you needed that extra bandwidth of uh, 5 gigahertz to uh, be able to uh, achieve that but uh, yeah 5 gigahertz has been around for professional use in offices and schools and universities uh, since the early days and I would say that this is a somewhere from around 2003 2004 maybe a little bit earlier and that's the overall problem with this it's been uh, built down to a price I think the design of this is pretty sound as we saw in the network analyzer we've got some nice responses there but they've just used cheap materials to keep the cost down and uh, that's the overall problem of this antenna now if I was going to keep this uh, antenna for myself and use it I would make changes to this uh, to help improve it slightly um, its overall quality Basically, I would use some foam and build up uh, the corners just to add some support here and possibly add some in the middle as well just to make it nice and secure. The second thing I would do is cut that off for starters so we haven't got an antenna in the middle. And the third thing is I would flow solder on all these elements to build them up a little bit, get a little bit more metal in there. They'll probably work a little bit better as well and last a lot longer. So you know there's quite a bit of flowing to do on here but it wouldn't take you that long with uh, you know a soldering iron to flow solder in there but uh, yeah the, the, the two chain uh, three changes that I would do if I wanted to keep this but uh, it's just an example of an antenna that's been built down to a price really and one last thing that I would add about this if the PCB board was of much better quality I would be tempted to chop these up into uh, four element packages you'd get quite a few dual band antennas out of this if you did that and uh, but if I tried to uh, cut these up even with the bandsaw it would just shatter this PCB material isn't doesn't like to be cut with a guillotine or a bandsaw so yeah I mean if it were better PCB board I may be tempted to do that and get all these little uh, you know uh, quad 
packages out of it possibly but yeah because it's so cheap and it's not worth it so hopefully uh, you found this video interesting uh, a quick teardown of uh, a uh, very vintage early dual band uh, panel antenna uh, interesting it's always nice to see and uh, you know interesting to see how some of these uh, cheaper manufacturers by the way there's no brand name on this um, how they get round and cut corners on cost um, you know it might look fine until you take the lid off but uh, we can definitely see how the uh, manufacturers saved cost on this to maximize profits so yeah if you did enjoy the video please give it a thumbs up if uh, you want to help support this channel and uh, you know help me buy more things like this to bring them to you then please uh, you know pop over to pay patreon it's uh, much appreciated any comments or questions uh, drop them below i'll do my best to answer them and hopefully you'll join me on the next one